Kia ora. In this video, I will be demonstrating an abdominal assessment. But before you undertake any assessment, it is important to first introduce yourself to the patient, confirm the patient's details, explain the procedures of the examination, and gain consent. Kia ora. My name is Jeremy Cool. I'm a part of the ambulance service. May I ask for your name and date of birth, sir? Clark Wayne, 14th of January, 95. Nice to meet you, Clark Wayne. An abdominal assessment should be included in a complete patient assessment. It is utilized to assess patients that have abdominal issues such as abdominal pain. Excuse me sir, do you mind if I undertake an abdominal assessment? No, no. Fantastic. Now that I've gained consent, I can undertake the assessment. But before you do anything, you must ensure that you have the correct equipment, such as personal protective equipment like gloves and goggles, as well as a stethoscope which I'm going to be needing later. Before I start the assessment, I'm going to look around the environment. I'm going to look around to see if I can see any sort of feeding tubes, stoma bags, or even medication. Anything that can indicate some sort of abdominal issue. From here, I'm going to assess the patient. I'm going to look at his appearance and his posture. I'm going to see if I can get an indication of his current pain and his current level of consciousness, and also ascertain whether or not he is suffering from obesity. I can see here that the patient is in mild discomfort as well as having uh, being aware to the situation and alert and is not obese. I'm now going to start the next part of the assessment which is an investigation. Physical investigations can start with the hands. So do you mind if I take a look at your hands? Not at all. During this I'm looking for any sort of arrhythmia uh, in the hands. This can indicate liver disease or liver failure. I'm going to start moving my way up the hands to look at the arms. I'm looking for any sort of needle tracks or needle marks that may indicate drug use, hepatitis B, or perhaps even hepatitis C. From here, I'm going to ask the, if I can look into the patient's mouth. Do you mind if I look into your mouth, sir? Thank you very much. So during the, whilst looking into the patient's mouth, you're going to be looking for any sort of ulcers that may indicate Crohn's disease. So now that this part of the assessment is completed, I'm going to be moving on to the next part, which is the abdominal investigation. So during this, I'm going to ask my patient to lay flat and expose his abdomen. Excuse me, Jack, do you mind if, I, if you lie flat and opening up your shirt for me? No, no, no. Fantastic. So during this part of the assessment, I'm going to be looking for any sort of scars. Scars can indicate possible surgeries that have been completed or perhaps even trauma. If I discover any, I can further investigate to get a better background knowledge of my patient. I'm also going to be looking for any distension. Distension can indicate fluid accumulation within the abdomen. I'm also going to be looking for, to see if there are any masses present. Masses can, if any masses are present in the abdomen, this can be an indication of an abdominal aortic aneurysm or perhaps even cancer. I'm also looking to see if there's any pulsation. If there's any pulsation present, this can be an indication of an abdom abdominal aortic aneurysm or perhaps even hypertension. I'm also going to assess the patient's abdomen for any Cullen sign, which is a blue discoloration around the umbilicus. If there's any blue discoloration around the umbilicus, this could be a sign of pan acute pancreatitis. I'm also going to be ass um, ass assessing for Gray Turner's sign, which is a blue discoloration around the flanks of the patient. If there's any blue discoloration or bruising around the flanks of the patient, this could indicate necrotic pancreati pancreatitis or even internal hemorrhaging. Finally, I'm going to be looking at Caput Medicae. Caput medicae is extended veins around the umbilicus and epigastric region. Uh, they extend out to the flanks and if they are present this could indicate portal hypertension. Finally I will be looking for any stomas, if any stomas are present. Stomas are signs of surgery uh, usually associated with inflammatory bowel disease. If present, uh, stomas can indicate bowel obstruction, adhesion and even internal hemorrhaging. The next part of my assessment is um, looking for tendon, uh, palpitation. During this, I'm going to be palpitating the patient by applying pressure to his abdomen. I'm going to be looking for any sort of tenderness. If tenderness or any sort of pain responses are present within the patient's face, uh, this could indicate 
um, a response. If there's any sort of tenderness in the lower right quadrant or umbilicus, this could indicate um, appendicitis. If there's any tenderness in the right upper quadrant, this could indicate hepatitis. I'm also looking for guarding, which is spasms of the abdominal muscles. If, spasm, if guarding is present, this could be an indication of appendicitis or even gastrointestinal perforation. I'm now going to um, uh, assess Mr. Wayne's liver. So to do this, I'm going to palpitate down from the lower right lower quadrant and move my way towards the right upper quadrant. If I can feel an enlarged liver with my fingertips, this could be an indication of alcoholic liver disease. I'm now going to have to move over to Mr. Um, Wayne's left side to assess his gallbladder. To assess Mr. Wayne's gallbladder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand underneath the lower right rib and extend my thumb into the abdomen. I'm also going to ask the patient to breathe in. Can you please breathe in for me, sir? Whilst applying pressure, if there is any um, tenderness, if the patient experiences any tenderness, this could be a sign of acute inflammation of the gallbladder. I'm now going to move over into assessing the spleen under the left costal margin. I'm going to um, palpitate down and if I can uh, uh, back and forth and ask the patient to breathe in. Do you mind breathing in for me, sir? If I can feel an enlarged spleen, this could be an indication of a potential infection. I'm now going to assess Mr. Wayne's aorta. To do this, I'm going to put my um, palms down uh, just above the umbilicus and towards the left. I'm going to be looking for a pulsation. If a pulsation is present, then I can measure the aorta. If the diameter is more than 2.5 centimeters, this could be an indication of an aortic aneurysm. From here, I'm going to assess Mr. Wayne's bladder. To do this, I'm going to palpitate down on his, from his umbilicus down to his pubic bone. If I can feel an enlarged bladder, then this can indicate urine retention. Um, please note that a bladder that is emptied of urine cannot be palpitated. Now that this part of the assessment is completed, I can move on to the next part, which is percussion. I'm going to percuss the, for the liver, um, starting by putting my hands on the, um, along the umbilicus on the right mid clavicular line and percuss upwards. If I hear a dullness, this could indicate the bottom of the liver. I'm next going to start from below the rib cage along the right mid clavicular line and percuss downwards. When I hear a dullness, this will indicate the beginning of the liver. I can use this to um, this procedure to assess the size of his liver, his spleen, as well as his bladder. The next part that I'm going to move on to is auscultation, where I'll be listening to the sounds of the abdomen. Whilst auscultating, I'm listening for bowel sounds. If no bowel sounds are present within two minutes of auscultation, this could indicate um, possibilities such as bowel obstruction or even twisted internal organs. From here, I'm going to be assessing for brutus. Brutus is a swishing sound in the abdominal arteries and if brutus is present, it can indicate vascular disease or even an abdominal aortic aneurysm. This will complete the abdominal assessment. If I found any abnormalities or irregularities or issues, uh, abdominal issues, I would classify this patient as status one, having uh, being life-threatening and time-critical.